Welcome to Rogers Center, home of your Toronto Blue Jays for Honda opening night. Your Blue Jays enjoyed a busy offseason. Please direct your attention to the video board as we celebrate being recognized by Major League Baseball with the 2012 Commissioner's Award for Philanthropic Excellence. The Blue Jays' commitment to amateur baseball in Canada has been a driving force for this organization in recent years. The club has set out to improve opportunities in physical activity through baseball and grow the game across our nation. Through several initiatives, the Toronto Blue Jays Baseball Academy and Jays Care Foundation are leading the charge to present these opportunities to a new generation of baseball lovers. Jays Care Rookie League brings baseball to kids in need in 44 community housing neighborhoods in Toronto and 10 provinces across Canada. The Field of Dreams program provided over $900,000 in funding for baseball fields and youth spaces in 2012. The Honda Super Camp offered three-day baseball camps in 16 cities across Canada last summer. And the Honda Instructional Clinics provided 40 sessions for amateur coaches countrywide. Kids out in the fields are important. Kids playing are important. They not only get the exercise, but they learn what teamwork's all about. It's an opportunity to give back. I'll tell you what, guys, it goes from top to bottom in this organization. We're a family. The baseball world has taken notice to what is happening across our nation. The Toronto Blue Jays are honored to receive the 2012 Commissioner's Award for Philanthropic Excellence, presented annually since 2010 to recognize an extraordinary charitable and philanthropic effort of an MLB club. Open up your eyes. Open up your eyes. Baseball in this country has never been stronger. And with the continued effort by the Blue Jays and our partners, we expect the game to continue to reach new highs. Not every one of these kids are going to make the major leagues, but I think at the very end of the day, they're going to have fun, and they're going to learn that it's getting that ball from third base to first base, uh, whether you're a major leaguer or a little leaguer, is a good challenge. to present the Commissioner's Award is Major League Baseball Executive Vice President of Business, Tim Brosnan. Accepting the award on behalf of Jays Care Foundation is Brandon Morrow. And on behalf of the Blue Jays Baseball Academy, a member of the Blue Jays alumni and a driving force in our academy, Dwayne Ward. Both Dwayne and Brandon, along with many other players and alumni, give back each and every day to our community. The Blue Jays thank all those involved and are committed to continuing to grow this sport right across the country. Go Blue Jays. Blue Jays. This offseason, the organization also celebrated excellence in broadcasting. In December of last year, it was announced that the late Tom Cheek would take his long-deserved place in the halls of Cooperstown. strike two blue jays down oh gets into one this one's well hit forget about it it's a home run first baseman doug alt has electrified this crowd at exhibition stadium he works to hassey there's a swing and a fly ball left field bell is there he's got it the blue jays have done it they have won the east they have won the east george bell catching the ball and dropping to his knees a swing and a drive Center field, this ball is tagged, it is up, it is gone off Windows Restaurant. Number 300 for Carlos Delgado. They are on their feet. The one-two pitch, swung on and missed, and the Blue Jays win it. The Blue Jays are on their way to the 1989 American League Championship Series. 6-4 to four Oakland. 
2-2 pitch. A swing, and there's a drive. That's a deep right field. Way back, way back. It's gone. A two-run home run for Roberto Alomar, and this game is tied up in Oakland. Pitch on the way, and there's a bunted ball. First base side, Timlin to Carter, and the Blue Jays win it. The Blue Jays win it. The Blue Jays are World Series champion. Catch a swing and a fly ball right field. Junior Felix is there. He's done it. He's done it. Dave Steve has his no-hitter. Finally. Dave Steve has pitched the first no-hitter in Blue Jays history. Here's a pitch on the way. A swing and a foul. Left field. Way back. Blue Jays win it. The Blue Jays are World Series champions. Touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. As the winter went on, the Blue Jays family welcomed several new members. And tonight, we are pleased to acknowledge two of our newest Blue Jays for their incredible achievements last season. R.A. Dickey reached the 200-win plateau for the first time in his career. He compiled a 2.73 ERA and led the National League in complete games and shutouts. He was recognized midseason with his first All-Star appearance, and he became the first knuckleball pitcher to win the Cy Young Award. Earlier this spring, R.A. was presented with his 2012 National League Cy Young Award by Richard Griffin, president of the Toronto chapter of the Baseball Writers Association of America. Blue Jays fans, congratulate you, R.A. The Rawlings Gold Glove is the highest symbol of defensive excellence. In pitching over 200 innings for the 12th straight year, Mark Burley had a perfect fielding percentage last season. And for the fourth straight season, he was named among the finest in the field in Major League Baseball. He is the only active pitcher with multiple gold gloves to his name. Here to present Mark with his Rawlings National League Gold Glove is Randy Beatty, General Manager, Rawlings, Canada. Congratulations, Mark. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here are the teams for tonight's game. First, please welcome the visiting Cleveland Indians, non-starters, coaches, and support staff. The starting lineup for the Cleveland Indians, managed by Terry Francona. Batting first, center fielder number 24, Michael Bourne. Batting second, shortstop number 13, Astrobal Cabrera. Batting third, second baseman number 22, Jason Kipnis. Batting fourth at first base, number 33, Nick Swisher. Batting fifth, left fielder, number 23, Michael Brantley. Batting sixth and catching, number 41, Carlos Santana. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, number 12, Mark Reynolds. Batting eighth at third base, number eight, Lonnie Chisenhall. Batting ninth in right field, number 11, Drew Stubbs. Pitching for the Indians tonight, right-hander, number 63, Justin Masterson. It's a mass 
massive deal, one of the most significant in the history of the Blue Jays. We're talking about one of the biggest trades in baseball history. Reyes, Burley, Josh Johnson. To the fans in Toronto and in Canada have been waiting for the Jays to make a big win-now type of move, and it is a monster. And now, Melky Cabrera to play left. Look out, AL East, a bluebird is back. Is there another move coming? It is official, R.A. Dickey is a Toronto Blue Jays. An Jay. embarrassment of riches right now in that rotation. The Blue Jays made it clear, we are going for it in 2013. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Our goals are big. I can't wait. I mean, I can't wait. I've never been more excited right now in this moment. I'm so excited. Be loud. Be ready. Hopefully we'll bring that uh, winning tradition back to Toronto. We've talked enough. I think it's just time to do it. Manager Len Freilich. Equipment Manager Jeff Ross. Clubhouse Manager Kevin Malloy. Strength and Conditioning Coordinator Brian King. Assistant Trainer Mike Prostad. Trainer George Poulos. Bullpen Catcher Alex Andriopoulos. Batting practice pitcher, Jesus Figueroa. Third base coach, Luis Rivera. Bench coach, DeMarlo Hill. First base coach, Dwayne Murphy. Hitting coach, Chad Matola. In the bullpen, pitching coach, Pete Walker. Also in the bullpen, bullpen coach Pat Hemken. Outfielder number 11, Rajay Davis. Infielder number 16, Mark DeRosa. Pitcher number 21, Sergio Santos. Catcher number 22, Henry. Blanco. Pitcher number 23, Brandon Morrow. Pitcher number 27, Brett Cecil. Pitcher number 32, Esmil Rogers. Pitcher number 33, Jeremy Jeffress. Pitcher number 38, Darren Oliver. Pitcher number 44, Casey Jensen. Pitcher number 48, Jay Happ. Pitcher number 50, Steve Delabar. Pitcher number 55, Josh Johnson. Pitcher number 56, Mark Burley. Pitcher number 62, Aaron Loop. Start 
starting lineup for the 2013 Toronto Blue Jays, managed by John Gibbons. Leading off, the shortstop, number seven, Jose. Presenting the colors, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Carrying our Canadian flag to the field are members of the University of Toronto varsity athletic teams. Fans, we ask that you please rise and join us along with all of Major League Baseball in observing a moment of silence for those who lost their lives or loved ones during the tragic events of December 14, 2012 at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. Thank you. From LaSalle, Ontario, she stars as Dorothy in Andrew Lloyd Webber's production of The Wizard of Oz, which has been on stage since December at the Ed Mervish Theater. Joining us tonight to perform the national anthems is Danielle Wade. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam. Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting
Canadian music icon. He is the vocalist, bassist, and keyboardist with the Toronto rock band Rush. He's a longtime Blue Jays season ticket holder and huge baseball fan. He and his bandmates will be the first Canadian band to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at a ceremony in Los Angeles April 18th, followed by Russia's North American Clockwork Angels Tour. Join us in welcoming to the field to throw out the ceremonial first pitch, Kenny Lee. Kenny will throw a great Welcome back to Rogers Center. It is Honda opening night. It is a packed house here in Toronto. The Cleveland Indians are in town to open up the 2013 season. And Pat, we have just witnessed a terrific pregame ceremony, including R.A. Dickey receiving a Cy Young Award from last year and Mark Burley receiving his fourth consecutive Gold Glove Award. How about the new players on this ball club? Uh, the ovation that they got from the Toronto fans. Jose Reyes got a huge ovation from everybody. Josh Johnson the same way. I think they're anticipating like we are anticipating good things happening. This is like Christmas morning. We've been hearing about these great players for so long and now we finally get to open up the presents. <laughs> but the players are excited. How about Jose Reyes. Emilio Bonifacio and Maestro Asturias 
at 645 the first three Blue Jays on the field to get loose for the game. I don't know if they didn't think that the game was going to start. But maybe they thought it started at 705 instead of 730. But you're right. They're out here stretching. Uh, they are high fiving the fans. They were talking to the people up in the upper decks. They are getting into it and getting into a big an emotional type of night with an emotional type of players. And finally, like you said, the day has come. Yeah, it sure has. It's been a great spring. And that guy right there, Jose Reyes, certainly brings a lot of energy and a lot of joy to this ball club. And it's a different kind of energy that we have seen here in a long time. He truly plays this game like a kid. He's appreciative of every opportunity. He and Emilio Bonofacio will team up up the middle to start this game tonight. And that's an infectious attitude. Dickey takes the mound for his first opening day start of his career and you heard the music in the background that is the Imperial March from the Star Wars movie series and R.A. Dickey as he says he's a Star Wars nerd. <laughs> Terry Francona in his first season at the helm of the Cleveland Indians anxious to get back on the field after being away for a year the starting lineup for the Cleveland Indians and there are some new faces in the Indians lineup including the leadoff hitter Michael Bourne. 257 stolen bases over the last four seasons. That's the most in the major leagues. And the Indians were starved for power. So what they do? They went out and signed the free agent, Nick Swisher, who's hit 20 or more home runs for eight straight seasons. And he's a switch hitter. It's going to be their everyday first baseman. Ari Dickey is coming off a terrific season with the Mets. He won 20 games for the first time in his career. And with that, the Cy Young Award in the National League. One of the most anticipated starts, I think, by a Blue Jay pitcher in a long, long time. We all know about the seven-player trade back in December with the Mets that brought R.A. Dickey here to Toronto to head the starting staff. And I think it pointed to this night right here. It's a legitimate number one guy who can match up with the other number ones in the American League East. May have been the final piece to the puzzle for Alex Anthopoulos. Behind Dickey on defense, a terrific outfield of... Cabrera, Rasmus, and Jose Bautista. Bautista had 11 assists in 90 games. The infield is Sturis, Reyes, Bonifacio, and Encarnacion in the battery. R.A. Dickey throwing to J.P. Aaron Sebe, and we are set for action. And I can't wait to see that man play shortstop here at Rogers Center. Michael Bourne takes the first pitch inside, and we are underway. Ball misses low, and Dickey works quickly. Something that really keeps everybody on the infield engaged. 274 a year ago with the Braves on the ground. We talked about Dickey and how quickly he works. He's very athletic. He's a terrific fielder, and he can handle anything that comes back to the mound with ease. Worked so hard in the spring on comebackers, and you'll see it this year. Very athletic, and what that does, that allows the middle infield to cheat a little bit to the pull side. All-star Astrubal Cabrera. Takes one just off the plate inside. You'll see on the ride to pitch tracker. And it'll be up there and give you an idea about the strike zone. One and one. That's the thing about R.A. Dickey. A little bit different than the knuckleball pitchers we have seen in the past. Throws it a little bit harder. Not a whole lot of floating of that knuckleball up towards home plate. He can control it and make it do different things. He really came into his own with the Mets. What he will do to left-handed batters... Once he gets to two strikes, 94% of the time, he'll put him away with that hard knuckleball. Just missed upstairs. You can see those last two efforts from Dickey against the left-hander just a little bit more on that pitch. 
than the ones earlier in the count. Another pitch upstairs. It's foul back. Well, I love the fact that he works so quickly. That really keeps the pressure on the hitters. And Scrubo Cabrera, a very good hitter, one of three switch hitters in the Indians lineup. Just missed downstairs. Time now for the keys to victory brought to you by Quaker State Rio Durable Oil. You know, there's a couple of them here in this ball game. I think the first thing that the Blue Jays have to do, they have to stop the speed of Terry Francona's team. 132 stolen bases by the tribe batters in the lineup tonight for Francona's team. And then they have to keep, get the ball in the air against Justin Masterson. He had an AO low 236 ground ball to fly ball ratio. So when the batters hit, they got to get the ball in the air against him. Comes back and gets ahead of Jason Kipnis. Kipnis really came into his own last year. Terrific season. He tied Carlos Santana with those 76 RBIs for the club lead. Had an outstanding first half to his rookie season. Kipnis. And I think pitchers started figuring him out just a little bit more in the second half. Tailed off a little bit. But you're right, power and speed. For the second baseman for the tribe. That goes helicoptering into the seats about three rows. <laughs> that fan says, yeah, we'll take you on, Indians. Come on. <laughs> don't give it back. That's his game, or don't give it back. <laughs> He's hiding it, isn't he? Uh, it's good to see everybody is okay, and now they will give it back and give him his game or back. Getting a switch to a black bat this time. Watch this one. Right into the stands. <laughs> he fired up for opening night. Here's the one and two. Cabrera at first. Come on and miss. Dickey's got his first strike out of the season. You can see that again with two strikes. The left-handers is going to throw that knuckleball just a little bit harder. That time registering 79 miles per hour. But watch the break. It's there for Kipnis. And then it's gone. Well, there's been so much talk about J.P. Aaron Seavey and how well he will do handling that knuckleball. He's been pretty good all spring long. Two outs now. Nick Swisher. Just off the plate outside. We mentioned Swisher signed as a free agent. He's now 32 years old. Drafted originally by the Oakland Athletics way back in 2002. Balls off the glove of Aaron Sebia and Cabrera will move up. Pass ball charge to Aaron Sebia. And one thing you can't do as a catcher is let the pass ball numbers get in your head. Yeah. You've got to erase that immediately. They're, they're going to be there. Just try to keep the ball in front of you. It's the knuckleball once again. And this one handcuffs JP right at the end. That is the strikeout. The one run right off his glove. That glove right there, it's an oversized catcher's glove, a lot like a softball catcher's glove. And I was talking to him today, and he said, all I want to do is let the ball come to me. If you go out there and try and catch it, that's when it dances right at the last minute. You can see how big that glove is. Designed specifically for a knuckleball. For sure with a good cut that fouls it straight back. Numbers with the Yankees a year ago. Swisher, we mentioned his eight consecutive seasons of 20 or more home runs. One of three players to be able to say that. Paul Canerco and David Ortiz. 20th pitch of the inning. 2-2 Two -two to Swisher. Upstairs. When you see that high knuckleball like that, that's by design. When he gets to two strikes, he'll throw it up there. And he's got tremendous control with it. Tries to throw it about letter high for that batter to swing at it. Full house at Rogers Center. Swisher pulls it down the right side, but that'll get into the seats. Swisher. 
Swisher's a five time All Star, and the Indians were 12th in the American League in home runs a year ago, so they bring in Nick Swisher's consistency with the long ball and added Mark Reynolds as well to boost the power. Another full count pitch on the ground. And Kanasian will go to the bag and take it himself. Dickey's out of the first. When we come back to Rogers Center, you'll see the newest Blue Jays. Jose Reyes will lead things off. Followed by Melky Cabrera coming off a 346 season. And the home run hitter Jose Bautista. And you can bet John Gibbons is thrilled to be able to run this line about there on a regular basis. It's loaded top to bottom. And of course, the table setters, Jose Reyes at the top of the order and Melky Cabrera. Jose Reyes, the 2011 batting champ, was last year with the New York Mets. And he beat out Ryan Braun to win that title. And how about that? A 346 average for Melky Cabrera. With the San Francisco Giants, Blue Jays signed him to a two year contract as a free agent back in November. And you can bet they're going to score a ton of runs ahead of this potent lineup. Yeah, a 390 on base percentage also for Melky. This is Justin Masterson and Deja Vu. Two years in a row that the Blue Jays get the starter, Justin Masterson, on opening day. He was terrific last year versus Toronto. Eight innings, just two hits and a run. When he is on, he's keeping the ball down and he's keeping it in the ballpark for his career. Three and one with a 3.00 own run average in 12 games against the Blue Jays. He was tough last year. In that opening game last season in Cleveland, Masterson had a season high 10 strikeouts. Switch hitter Jose Reyes shows bunt, takes ball two. Reyes now 30 years old. And he has the count in his favor, 3 0. And he's always a base stealing threat. Reyes led the National League three times in stolen bases. And he's going to get his first base here with a full pitch walk for Masterson. That has always been the knock against Justin Masterson. Nothing wrong with his stuff. It's outstanding. Fastball slider. He can sink it a little bit. Mixes in a little bit of a change up. But at times he walks too many batters. Second switch hitter in the lineup is Melky Cabrera. Five straight wide ones from Masterson. Cabrera hit 346 last year. He was suspended for failing a drug test August 15th. At that time, he had 159 hits, more than anybody in baseball. He can flat out hit. Yeah, he does it with a great swing. Very compact, very short. He can wait very long on the ball. And if you make a mistake, he can sting it. Got an extra base pop in that bat also. Well, that was a borderline pitch. Masterson got a favorable call. He's ahead one and two. 
when a guy like this is all over the place as a hitter, you have to anticipate the ball being in the strike zone. Pulled foul. What you can't do, you can't go up there. Hey, he walked the first batter on four pitches. He might walk me. That's no way to. You go up there, anticipate him throwing a strike, and read it out, and you're swinging until your mind tells you it's off the plate. Bautista on deck. Boy, this is what Cabrera does so well. He truly shortens up with two strikes. He really came into his own as a hitter in 2011 in Kansas City. Had 201 hits for the Royals. He's just one of those guys that learned how to hit later on in his career. Started using the whole field just a little bit more. To really track that ball. You think nerves are a factor early on for Masterson? Yes. I mean, there's a lot of energy in this ballpark. Yep. Second straight season of an opening day started last year was in Cleveland. They were all for him. There's 50,000 here against him. Line to short. That'll be a double play. Reyes took a couple extra steps towards second, and Cabrera doubled him off. So Bautista, after a promising start to the inning, will bat with nobody on and two outs. That perspective right there is a new one for the fans here at Rogers Center. That is the former restaurant windows that has been changed to a wide open fan destination. And you can see there's quite a few fans on the rails of that new venue. They were the first ones here <laughs> this afternoon for the game. I predict that that's going to be a very popular place this summer. Yeah, it's going to end up being a destination, and anybody that comes into the ballpark will be able to make their way down to that area. Bautista fouls another one off. It's behind 0 and 2. Bautista has a pair of home runs against Masterson. 27 homers a year ago, and missed the second half of the season. Fair ball down the left side as Michael Brantley gets over quickly and hustles it back in. Bautista with a hit in his first at bat of the season. That's where you hope that the home team fans would have reached over, maybe touched the ball and had a ground rule double. Bautista all over the sinking fastball. Hammers it right down the line past Chisinau, the third baseman, right over the bag. But it's hit so hard and it's played so nicely by Brantley, holds him to a single. Well, the Indians outfield, three center fielders, left, center, and right. Edwin Encarnacion gets hit by a pitch. Masterson still struggling to find the strike zone. Fastball. They want to pitch him in. The defense is playing Encarnacion to pool. You see Santana set up on the inside part of the plate. That one just got away from Masterson. So Edwin Encarnacion's at first. Bautista moves to second. Masterson's in a jam with two outs and one of the best opening day hitters in baseball. Adam Lynn steps to the plate. 10 for 15 on opening day. Looks at one outside. That's the highest batting average on opening day among active players with a minimum of 10 plate appearances. His season numbers from a year ago 11 homers and 45 RBIs. What have you seen that you've liked about Lynn so far through the spring into this first game? Seems to be a little bit more free at the plate that he can pull the ball if he has to. Uh, the bat's a little bit quicker. He can get it out in front. And he's very effortless, I think, at the plate. One and one. 
driven down the left side, but sliced into the seats. It's a very interesting defensive alignment that the Indians are throwing up there against Adam Lynn. The infield is playing him to pull. I think they're going to, he hits it on the ground, they're going to pull. But look at the outfield playing him the other way. And that's right. Adam Lynn, Adam Lynn especially against hard throwing righties like Masterson, hits a lot of balls the other way in the air. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Big sweeping breaking ball gets a piece of it. Stay alive. 19 pitches for Masterson. Boy, you'd love to see Lynn get off to a great yeah. start. Can you say a big at bat in the first inning <laughs> of opening night? <laughs> off the plate, two and two. Both starters now up over 20 pitches in the first inning. Dickey threw 21 in the top half of the inning. Great sight. Packed house at Rogers Center. Lind is 5 for 15 for his career against Justin Masterson. Ball and Lynn strikes out. Blue Jays threatening the first, but Masterson strikes out Lynn. Bautista single. The Edwin Encarnacion was hit by a pitch, and then Lynn strikes out to leave two. Third time in franchise history the Blue Jays have opened up against the Cleveland Indians. They beat the Indians in 1987 at Exhibition Stadium. And then last year, of course, that historic 16 inning 7 4 win in Cleveland. In 1987, Jimmy Key started against Tom Candiotti. And Jimmy Key was the winner in that. And there was an Indian that had a pretty good day against the Blue Jays left hander. My partner Pat Tabler <laughs> hit a two run home run off Jimmy Key and he went, what, two for four that opening? Yeah, and just missed another one off the top of the fence at right field against Jimmy. Where are you, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> His left arm is aching as we speak. Michael Brantley takes the first pitch strike from R.A. Dickey. Let's see if Dickey can't bounce back after a 21 pitch first inning. Up the middle. Base hit for Brantley. Boy, he can hit. Michael Brantley. He just wore out the Blue Jays last year. In a three game series in July, Brantley was 8 for 11 right here at Rogers Center. So he likes hitting in this place. But that was a pretty good knuckleball yeah. he got him over. Good knuckleball, but a good approach by Michael Brantley. A very short swing, not a lot of movement. 
These are the kind of guys who can handle those knuckleball pitchers. People like this, Michael Brantley. Short swing, quick to the ball. Don't have to commit early. Switch hitting catcher, Carlos Santana. We mentioned Santana and Kipnis tied for the Indians team lead with 76 RBI. Santana hit 255. Santana's just 26 years old. It's his ball into center, but it, Rasmus is there, has it measured, and that's the first out of the inning. Honda opening night on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the 2013 Honda CRV and IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Mark Reynolds, the DH. Of course, Blue Jay fans remember Reynolds is. The first baseman for the Orioles a year ago and had a pretty good run with the Orioles. 23 home runs last year. There is a need in Cleveland for some power. Ball gets away from Aaron CB, goes back to the backstop, and Brantley moves up to second. Well, that's the only thing that you worry about. Double plate situations there with a the runner at first base, get the ball on the ground with Mark Reynolds, and you're going to get out of the inning. At that time, another pass ball wipes that out. Don't reach for it. That's what JP was telling me before the ball game. You can see he's not really reaching for it, but that ball's pulling away from him. Yeah, and the one thing I said earlier that you have to really have a short memory. You just got to forget about the two pass balls and relax and try to corral the next one. Three and oh count to Reynolds. Dickey will occasionally throw a fastball, but not very often. He's up over 80% knuckleballs. That high knuckler that was fouled off the mask of Aaron Sebia. You know, if he does throw a fastball, like, let's say in a 3 0 count like he did to Reynolds, he'll keep it away from him. Maybe they're a little bit over anxious. Anticipating it, just trying to keep that off the barrel of the bat. Throw well, that good one right here. Well, it was a good one, but Reynolds laid off. Second walk of the ball game issued by Dickey. One thing that I've noticed here in the first two innings of the game, how patient the Indians hitters are against that knuckleball. He has been able to throw an awful lot of strikes last year. His walk to strikeout ratio was very good. This is upstairs. They're doing a good job of laying off those borderline pitches. Yeah, very, very patient. They have known to, to do that, the Indians. Take the ball the other way, work the count, get in deep. Another ball off the glove of Aaron Sebia back to the backstop and runners move up. You know, you talk about Dickey last year. He only walked 54 batters last season. That was in 33 starts and 233 innings. So very patient with it. That time just another miss by Aaron Sebia. Another pass ball. Two balls and a strike to the Indians third baseman Lonnie Chisinau. Three pass balls have been charged to J.P. Aaron Sebia. On the ground. That'll get to run home. Chisinau is out at first on the play. Michael Brantley comes in to score and the Indians have taken a one nothing lead. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lead off single by Michael Brantley, and Chisinau cashes it in. Chisinau had 16 RBIs last year in 43 games for Cleveland. Reynolds at second. Now two down. Take advantage of what the defense is going to give you. If they didn't have that pass ball, that's a double play, and they're out of the inning, but the Indians will cash it in the run. Base hit just over the glove of his tourist. Melky Cabrera comes up and his throw is offline. Reynolds is in to score on the throw. Drew Stubbs goes to second, and the Indians have taken a 2 nothing lead. The team that really struggled last year hitting with runners in scoring position, the Indians, and they're going to come up with a big hit right off of the glove of Meiser Asturias. Knuckleball not hit very hard by Stubbs off the glove. Melky Cabrera came up firing, but he's off target. Back to the top of the order. Michael Bourne grinded out his first time up. And gets away from Aaron Seabit, but not far enough for Stubbs to advance. Indians a year ago were near the bottom in runs per game. They scored 4.1 runs per ball game, and that was 13th in the American League. There's a strike. Right back to Dickey. That'll end the inning. But the Indians take a 2 nothing lead on a couple of hits. Drew Stubbs, newly acquired from Cincinnati, delivers on his first hit bat an RBI single to left. 2 nothing Cleveland. At Rogers Center, it's Honda opening night, and it proves to be a very exciting week. It's always exciting on opening yeah. night, Pat, and everybody feels a lot of anticipation about what's ahead for the Toronto Blue Jays. Hopefully, good things. Uh, you know, I, I, this team is a good team. It's put together with great thoughts in mind about manufacturing runs, being able to hit good pitching. I think we'll see that so far in this game. Blue Jays haven't been able to take care of their base runners and bring them around, and the Indians have been able to cash them in. J.P. Aaron Cibia. He is in the hole 0 and 2. J.P. a year ago, 18 home runs, 56 RBIs, but his season was cut short by a broken hand. Took a foul ball off the bat of Brandon Inge and suffered a broken hand. And he was just starting to swing the bat. The power started coming around. Goes after that, sinking fastball and strikes out. One down. 
Big NHL trade deadline tomorrow. Hockey Central trade deadline presented by Coors Light. Sportsnet will have a full day coverage tomorrow, tracking every team on TV, radio, online, and mobile. Stay in the know on every trade, anywhere, anytime, right here on Sportsnet. Kobe Rasmus. Well, Masterson's got that ball really diving, doesn't he? He looks like a different pitcher this inning. After he got out of the trouble in the first inning, his team scores him two in the top of the inning. He comes right back firing strikes. This is how he looked on opening day last year. Well, Masterson is one of the toughest guys in baseball to elevate the ball against. He throws an awful lot of sinking fastballs. Yeah, that's why we were talking about it in the keys to the game to get the ball in the air. I think tonight against Masterson. He had the best ground ball to fly ball ratio in the American League last year. Balls behind Rasmus three and one. Well one of the real aspects of battling against Masterson is just. Taking advantage of the few mistakes he makes. And there's a one out walk. Blue Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Third baseman Meiser is Storis. Takes one downstairs. Storis starting at third base. Breath Laurie on the disabled list. Not expected to be out too long. Last year with the Angels, his stores hit 256. Takes another ball, 2 0. Oh. Well, one thing you know you're going to get with the stores, both in the field and at the plate, is a good effort. He's 32 years old now, and he's a guy that understands what his skill level is. And I think he's a real good addition to this ball club. At 17 steals. Yeah. He's a pro. Yeah, he doesn't try and do too much. Not a lot of power there. They pitch the ball away, just tries to poke it the other way. Throws a little something inside. He'll try and pull it through that hole on the right side. There's a strike. It's two and one. Masterson was traded from Boston to Cleveland July 31st of 2009. Bounced foul. That's interesting because it's his current manager that called him in the office in Baltimore and said, Justin, we've just traded you. Terry Francona was the skipper of the Red Sox at that time, and he said it was one of the toughest things he had to do to tell a young guy that he was going to be traded from his original club. But they were going for it, and they got a pretty good player in return for him. Victor Martinez, key to their efforts. And Masterson certainly has found a home in Cleveland. Full count one out. With Masterson throwing so many ground balls, you'd expect Rasmus to be on the move. There he goes. Fly ball popped into shallow right. Drew Stubbs is there. His tourist is out, two down. Good idea by the Blue Jays. Try to open up a hole, get something started there, starting that runner. Unfortunately, they got the ball in the air and he's not standing at second base. The third of the three switch hitters in the lineup tonight, Emilio Bonifacio. That's ninth. Just 64 games a year ago with the Marlins. In 258, he had a couple of different stints on the disabled list. Initially, he tore the tendon in his hand, sliding head first in a steal attempt. Had surgery on it when he came back. He re injured that same thumb, diving, trying to make a catch in the outfield. And then the final injury of the season, he injured his knee and that finished his season. Tough year for him. Yeah, but he is a threat. He is a good player. Can hit the ball the other way. He's got a little pop, too. They were having a lot of fun during batting practice, and Bonifacio hit a few balls out of the ballpark, and everybody was getting on him. 
Reyes said, no, I saw him hit one right out over the center field <laughs> fence. I really saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not known for his power. Just one home run last year. But his job is to get on base. If he can get the ball to the outfield with something on it, the outfield is playing very shallow against him. If he can split the outfield, it's going to be a run for the Blue Jays. Fights this one off. You're right, Masterson does look like a different pitcher in this inning. 21 pitches in the first inning. Thrown 18 so far this inning. I mean, appears to be a little more aggressive to the heart of the plate. Yeah. Use the fastball and that natural sinking action will take it to the corner. In last year's game, if you remember opening day, early in the count, it was fastball, fastball, fastball. And then he put away a lot of those right handed batters with the slider to pick up those 10 strikeouts you were talking about. Good battle going on here between Bonifacio and Masterson. Masterson was in line for the win. Chris Perez blew the save in the ninth inning. Blue Jays tied it and would eventually go on to win it in the 16th. And then a little more up in this at bat than he would like. Way off the plate. Fans out in center field enjoying what was formerly Windows Restaurant. They have not yet named this area, but it's going to be a destination for sure. In fact, there's a private function in there, but after that, everybody in the ballpark will have access to that area. And you come and sit in the fifth deck and watch a few innings and then make your way out to that restaurant in the center. You can be part of that crowd. It's huge too. Yeah. It's going to be a real hot spot. Yeah. A Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon out there. Should be a lot of fun. Two and two. Two outs. Base it to right field. Drew Stubbs cuts it off. Rasmus around second headed for third. Bonifacio slides into second. A two out double. His first hit as a Blue Jay. You mentioned it last inning, the Cleveland Indians basically playing three center fielders in their outfield so they can run and they can cover a lot of ground. When this ball is hit by Bonifacio, it looked like extra bases and possibly a run for the Blue Jays as Rasmus reads it, goes to third base. Drew Stubb does a great job of getting over to his glove side, cutting the ball off and making a throw, but it's too late as Bonifacio has hustles his way in for a double. Back to the top of the order. Reyes takes a breaking ball for a strike. Reyes walked in his first at bat. Two nothing Cleveland. Masterson ahead, 0 and 2. There are going to be scoring opportunities all throughout this lineup. Just the way that they were put together with the speed at the bottom of the lineup. Just off the plate. 97 miles an hour from Masterson. Dialed that up a notch. Ball Swisher shovels to Masterson. Reyes is retired. The Blue Jays strand two more. They've left four on base through two innings. Cleveland's up two to nothing.
for this tonight, and he's standing by with a special guest. Thanks Eric. a lot, Buck. I'm with Dave Jamison. He's the assistant vice president of Honda Canada Sales. And Dave, what is Honda's involvement with the Blue Jays on opening night? Barry, you know, Honda is the official vehicle uh, supplier and partner uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays. And we're also the sponsor of this great event this evening, uh, the Honda Home Opener. Uh, at Honda, this is, hasn't been uh, a new relationship. This relationship has been going on for over 30 years. And also tonight, a very special night for one lucky fan who's going to go away with a pretty good prize. Yeah, we've got three great prizes, actually. We're starting off with a, uh, a lawn care kit, which is a uh, trimmer, a lawnmower, and a tiller. Uh, then we're moving to our new newest motorcycle in our lineup, the 500 uh, motorcycle. It is uh, just getting to our dealerships now. And, in fact, uh, then one great winner is going to get the all-new 2013 CRV, which is built in uh, just off the road in Alliston. Uh, right beside our, uh, our uh, milestone product, our Honda Civic, which has been the best-selling car for 15 straight years in Canada. So we're very excited about this evening's activities. All right, listen, thanks a lot, Dave. Appreciate it. Thank you, Barry. All right, back to you, Buck. Thank you, Barry. And it's been a great relationship. Over 30 years, Honda and the Blue Jays have been associated. Honda's involved for the entire week here, the opening week of the 2013 season. Cleveland's in town for three games, and on Friday night, the Boston Red Sox will come to town for a three-game series. Three and two. Up the middle, Reyes knocks it down, gets on it, and uses that strong arm to gun down Estrubo Cabrera. Reyes has a terrific arm. You don't see it all the time, but when he needs it, he can really rifle it across the diamond. Yeah, you won't see it on the routine plays right at him. Positioning perfect here. And once the ball pops out of his gloves, now he's going to show off that great arm. Quick release. Gets over there in plenty of time to get Estrubo Cabrera. Whenever you drop the ball like that, you've got to pick it up with your bare hand. Got some nice work over at first from Edwin Encarnacion. Of course, those two played on the Dominican Republic team during the World Baseball Classic back in March. The Dominican team went 8-0 and won the championship. Jason Kipnis struck out back in the first inning. Ball on the strike. Bouncing ball, big hopper in Canacion. Kipnis is down. Edwin really blossomed last year as defender over at first base. I think the confidence he had with the bat carried out onto the field. He became a very good first baseman. Well, he's always been very athletic. The problem he got into when he was over on the other side of the diamond was having to throw it across when he was the third baseman. But I think you're right with the, the great year that he had offensively. The Blue Jays showing faith in him by giving him a contract extension. He's turned into a pretty good first baseman. Nick Swisher takes one downstairs. Swisher's always had a very good eye at the plate. He's always a guy that's up among the leaders in on base percentage. For his career, he's got a 361 on base percentage. That's what drove Billy Bean for the Oakland A's to draft Swisher out of Ohio State University. He's always a, a guy up, up in the leaders of pitch a scene per at bat also. Bonifacio from his knees gets up and throws Swisher out. There's that good defense we were telling you about. A couple of good plays on the infield. Reyes throws out Cabrera, and then with two outs, Bonifacio goes to his right, hops to his feet, and ends the inning throwing out Swisher.
Welcome back to Honda opening night. Cleveland is ahead two to nothing. It'll be two, three, and four in the Blue Jays lineup. Melky Cabrera will start things off. Breaking ball missed outside. Rip to right. Hot shot past Drew Stubbs. Cabrera is around first. He's headed for second. Melky Cabrera has lined the ball hard in both of his at bats. First one right at the shortstop. That ended up being a double play and really took the Blue Jays out of a big inning. This time all over this pitch from Masterson. Down, and you can see how quick he is to the ball. Short swing, creates backspin, and watch it really handcuff. Stubbs in right field. Stubbs is an excellent fielder. That time had no chance. He's lucky that ball didn't go all the way to the wall. Cabrera's at second. Single in an air on the right fielder. Lead off man's at second. Jose Bautista singled his first time up. Way off the plate. I think they've made a concentrated effort. That they're going to pitch both Bautista and Encarnacion inside tonight. The defense bears that out. Nick Swisher at first base is way off the line for Bautista. And we know where that ball first pitched to Encarnacion went. Right on his thigh. Bautista with the count in his favor as Encarnacion stands waiting in the on deck circle. Well, he was looking inside. It yeah. was just low. Turn him loose. Yeah. A couple of home runs in those six hits in his career versus Masterson. Three and zero. Oh. Bautista tossed his bat aside, thinking it was ball four. Here is pitch tracks. The fourth pitch of the at bat shows that it was outside the strike zone. Breaking ball on the corner, three and two. If he throws it three and one, don't you think he throws that breaking ball again, three and two? That's what most hitters think. Cabrera with the leadoff single went to second on the year by Stubbs in right. Santana, the catcher, asked for timeout. He wasn't quite sure he and Masterson were on the same page. Danger lurking. There's ball four. Bautista has been aboard twice already tonight. Blue Jays have stranded two each inning. They have two more on in the third. We mentioned Masterson last year opened up the season against the Jays. The Indians had a 4 1 lead going to the top of the ninth, and the Blue Jays scored three. Another pitch inside. You're right on the money. I think they want to pitch inside to these big right handed batters. And Masterson has had success against righties. They only hit 232 against them last year, 10th lowest in the American League, and you can see why. Now, Edwin Encarnacion is a very good low ball hitter. If he tries to jam him with that fastball inside, he could put a charge into it. Bouncing ball, foul. And Carnacion had a two run double in that ninth inning a year ago opening day and he just missed an extra base hit as it pulled foul Vic Carapaza the third base umpire waving it off. Look at the defense that the Indians are showing Edwin Encarnacion the shortstop and third baseman really pulled over that's Chisinau just two steps from the line at third base. That's where Michael Young played in Philadelphia. The Phillies third baseman took a double away from Encarnacion in his first yep. at bat. 
And you're not going to play the defense like that and then pitch him outside. You're going against your strength. So as a hitter, look for it right there. One and two. Way outside. Big sweeping breaking ball. Lots of happy faces at Rogers Center. Everybody's been waiting a long time for opening night. Got a piece of it and got a piece of the catcher as well. Santana took one off the left leg. Now the Blue Jays got some thump in the middle of their order. Miguel Cabrera led the pack in the American League that triple crown season. He had 44 home runs. Curtis Granderson of the Yankees, Josh Hamilton, formerly of the Rangers, and Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin was fourth in the American League. Premier high in home runs and RBIs and many other offensive categories for Encarnacion. Jeff Nelson, home plate umpire. Called time before Masterson delivered. Masterson has thrown 59 pitches with nobody out here in the third. He's not long for this game. Yep. The Blue Jays have to start cashing in some of these runs. What good eye by Encarnacion laying off that tight breaking ball. Full count, nobody up. Cabrera singled and reached second on the double. Bautista walked, and you can see Bautista saying, Cool it. We got a lefty bat on deck. The Blue Jays lined into a double play in the first inning. Melky Cabrera hit one to short. Reyes was doubled off at first. Full count, nobody out. Bases are loaded. That walk rate for Edwin Encarnacion has gone up three straight years, and you can see why he fell behind Masterson right there and then battled him, laid off a couple of very tough sliders that were just off the plate to work that walk. Mickey Calloway, the new pitching coach, is out to have a chat with his right hander. The 2013 Honda CRV, an IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Roof closed at Rogers Center. It is a blustery night outside. Snow flurries most of the day here in Toronto. Three career grand slams for Adam Lynn and we mentioned his terrific opening day record. He is now 10 for 16 on opening day. Goes after the first pitch and why not after the walk to Encarnacion. Yeah two straight walks first to Bautista and then to Encarnacion you get a message from your pitching coach. Why not go right after him. What Lind was thinking as he swung at that pitch, thinking about getting the ball in the air right here. Blue Jays are having some good at bats. They're taking some borderline pitches from Masterson. Second for one, back to first, and on the play, Melky Cabrera comes in to score. Lind hit a shot, and it was a nice play by Estrubal Cabrera, the Indian shortstop, that started the 6 4 3 double play. He is an excellent shortstop. Estrubal Cabrera, soft hands. Watch this one handcuff him from the backside, but he knows it's hit hard. He's got time. He makes a nice throw over to Kipnis to get the double play. Blue Jays looking for the ball in the air. You can't hit it any better than that. 
And you don't have anything to show for. 26 double plays he threw last year, Masterson, and that's a big one for him right there. J.P. Aaron Sebia takes the first pitch strike. Aaron Sebia struck out on a sinking fastball his first time. Up Bautista moves to third on the double play. That's that same pitch he chased for the strikeout in the second. Masterson has the ability to make the ball go into right handers and away from right handers. So I think you have to pick one of them. You either sit on the slider until you get the two strikes or that fastball that runs inside. Bautista came a long way down from third toward home on the pitch. He is anticipating a ball in the dirt. He doesn't take anything for granted when he plays this game. He knows Chisinau has to play deep at third base with two outs and two strikes. Off the plate. Jeff Nelson's been very consistent with the strike zone. He's got a conservative strike zone, but it's been consistent early on. 68 pitches thrown by Masterson already. This is the first game of his season. You're right. Blue Jays are having some good at bats against them. This is one area of concern for Terry Francona is the middle innings. They're strong at the end, but the middle innings really a question mark. A lot of young players. Three and two. Strike three call. Masterson strikes out Aaron Sebia for a second time but the Blue Jays cut into the Indians lead as the 2-1 ball game after 3 Blackberry sneak peek stat of the game brought to you by your new Blackberry Z10 built to keep you moving. Might be the easiest one of the season. The pitch usage for R.A. Dickey, you know you're going to get a knuckleball. Now within that 86% of the knuckleball, you're going to get three different types. You're going to have the slow, a little bit faster, and then the one that he tries to strike you out with. And when you see it about 78, 79 miles an hour with two strikes, that's the hard one. Low 70s is the one that he just tries to get over early in the count for strikes. Two strikes, he'll jump that up about 88% of the time. He'll use that knuckleball. Charlie Manuel told us in Philadelphia over the weekend, we haven't even seen the good Dickey yet. All right, Dickey got off to a great start a year ago with the Mets. It led to that National League Cy Young Award. Started out his season 11 and 1. During that stretch, he had an eight game win streak. Boy, that's a wicked breaking blow right there. That knuckleball just dove right at the last moment and got him in the strike zone. You can see the Indians hitters trying to be very patient with them. Well, how do you combat that? Throw it in the strike zone. Put them on the defensive. Oh, 
Brandley lifts it down the left side. Long run for Cabrera, and he won't get there. You were talking about that knuckleball dance, and you just don't have any idea as a catcher where it's going to go. Here it comes. JP, you can see he's letting it come to him, and it hits right off of his thumb, then off of his shin guard. Right at the last minute, that acceleration and the movement that he gets off that pitch. Aaron Seavey has been charged with three pass balls tonight. That's a new club record for a single game. Two pass balls have been done 11 different times in Blue Jays history. Brantley continues to wear out the Blue Jays in this ballpark with a single in his first at bat. We mentioned a year ago had a terrific series in July. This time he strikes out. <laughs> Rogers customers can watch every Blue Jays game this season on Sportsnet live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyPlaceTV.com slash sports to get started. Take the Blue Jays with you. Take Rangers with you anywhere you go. Blue Jays game all season long right here on Sportsnet. That strikeout of Michael Brantley got his average now under 600 <laughs> in his career here in this ballpark. Catcher Carlos Santana flying out to center. And his only at bat tonight. Santana, the switch hitting catcher, is now 26 years old. He set an Indians club record for most home runs by a switch hitter, 27. Kind of surprised me. I think about Eddie Murray hitting there, but he was at the end of his career. But Santana holds the record for an Indians switch hitter. At a prime position, also a catcher with power. He's got a good eye at the plate, also. He'll walk, force that pitcher to throw strikes. Just off the plate, and there's that walk you were talking about. It comes with one out. 91 of them last year, what was the third most in the American League? So you combine power and some good on base percentage. Third walk issued by Dickey. Mark Reynolds walked and scored in the second. He'll step in the batter's box with Santana at first. Two one ball game. We're in the top of the fourth. Ball gets away from Aaron Sebia, and there's that opportunity for the double play as Santana moves to second. It's a wild pitch charged to Dickey. Coming at very bad times for the Blue Jays. Runners on scoring, a chance for the double play. And this one will probably be called a wild pitch as it hit the dirt first, but it wipes out the chance to turn a double play. Bounced on the ground. There's your double play ball, but Reyes goes across the diamond and Reynolds is out 6 3 on the ground out. Well, three times tonight, the Blue Jays have had a pass ball or wild pitch after a walk. So that just eliminates any possibility of getting a double play to get you out of that inning. One of those would have gotten him out of the inning. Chisinau, the batter right here back in the second inning, hit a ground ball to shortstop. That would have been a double play, but it came after a pass ball. There's a little flare to left field. Santana's going to stop at third base as Chisinau fights it off. Melky Cabrera was cheating in over toward the line and got to the ball very quickly. He's got a good arm, too. Watch him cheat. And attack this ball. It's not hit very hard by Chisinau, and he's not playing very deep. Brad Mills, the third base coach of the Indians, does the right thing and holds up Santana to keep the inning alive. You can see anytime that outfielder gets to the ball before that base runner hits the bag, he's going to throw him out. First and third, two outs. Drew Stubbs drove in a run back in the second with a single to the left. 
Here's where you really got to relax as a catcher. You've had three pass balls. Dickey's been charged with a wild pitch, and you got another run just 90 feet away. But as hard as it is, you got to keep your soft hands. There's a strike. Can you stay in front of the ball as a catcher? As you, as you see, it's starting to float on the inside part of the plate. Just get something on it to try and keep it in front of you. You don't want to move too much because obviously your eyes are going to go with you. And then you get your eyes moving and the knuckleball is moving and then you're really in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in this situation before. As I mentioned, I caught Bruce Del Canton back in Kansas City years ago. Line to Reyes, and that'll end the inning. Cleveland leads two men on. They lead it two to one. Bottom third of the Blue Jays' order. Colby Erasmus will start things off, followed by Miseris Storis. Emilio Bonifacio doubled his first time up. Green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone are fans that got a free seat upgrade. The TD Comfort Zone, courtesy of TD. Big, comfy chairs, but you're going to notice that they have moved. They've gone upstairs. The high rent district as the TD Zone has moved into that second deck. Good perspective for the fans to get an opportunity to enjoy the ball game sitting in those big, comfy green chairs. Welcome to the ball game. And we got a good one going. 2 1. Cleveland leads. Bottom of the fourth. Colby Erasmus. Erasmus doubled in his last spring training at bat in Philadelphia on Saturday. Just missed hitting a home run. That might be a sign of things to come. He walked and is only at bat tonight. It's been a tough spring for Colby. He's been working on different things at the plate. You can see from last year, he's changed his stance just a little bit. His hands are not as high. Still right on top of the plate. But you're right, those one swings or that, that feeling in the plate that you can get at the end of spring training can carry right on to the regular season and kickstart you to have a good year. What kind of adjustments do hitters have to make to a first year hitting coach? Chad Matola. Well, luckily for the Blue Jays last year, Matola came up. In September and got a chance to work with a lot of these guys. So there was always that already that working agreement between them. Kept in contact with them over the winter time and spent a lot of time in that cage this spring with all the hitters. Matola really enjoyed his time this spring with the hitters, got to know the new guys, and the one thing he felt confident with working with these new hitters is the fact that they're all veterans. They all have their programs figured out. He said I learned an awful lot about these new guys and they all have the routine they like to go through. Reyes Bonifacio he said the one I was most impressed with all spring long was Milky Cabrera. 
has a terrific routine that he's dedicated to day in and day out. And as a hitting coach, you have to know something about hitting, obviously. But you have to know your hitter. You have to know the strengths and the weaknesses and the little sayings that might get the light turned on in their head. Historis takes strike two. Some guys like to take a lot of flips from the coach. Some guys like to hit off of a pitching machine. Got to spend the time. Line to right, Stubbs. It's there, measures it, second down. Fans Junior Jays Saturday, they're presented by Boston Pizza. Saturday, April 6th, Blue Jays will take on the Boston Red Sox. The game starts at 1.07 p.m. Special kids prize tickets in the 200 and 500 level outfield seats. After the game, kids 14 and under can run the bases just like the pros. For tickets, call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com, or you can always stop by most Rogers Plus locations and pick up your tickets for Junior Jays Saturday. First of the season, and the Boston Red Sox will be in town. This is popped up. Michael Bourne, the center fielder, calls for it, and the Blue Jays go down in order in the fourth. It's a 2 1 ball game. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. The opening night here at Rogers Center, and it's a packed house. A lot of big smiles as they're glad to see the season begin. And the Blue Jays have revamped their rotation. Three new starters in the organization. R.A. Dickey came from the Mets. He won the Cy Young in New York a year ago. Josh Johnson, the two-time All-Star, formerly an ERA champ with the Marlins, and Mark Burley. We all know about him. He spent 11 seasons with the Chicago White Sox. He received his fourth consecutive gold glove tonight before the start of this ball game, and they certainly bring an experience. They bring a presence. They have leadership and for the first time probably since Roy Halladay left they have an ace. Yeah, and they're bringing some hardware also <laughs> to the ballpark. Uh, Dickey with his Cy Young and Burley with all of his gold all star appearances for Josh Johnson. That's something the Blue Jays had to do this offseason. With the injuries last season to Kyle Drabeck and to Drew Hutchison, Ricky Romero ineffective in the spring. They needed to do something to get some innings out of their starters. Their starters were 10th in the American League in ERA with a 482 ERA. They had allowed the fourth most runs in the American League as a pitching staff, 784. The one holdover in the five man rotation is Brandon Marlowe. Michael Bourne, it's his first hit in three at bats tonight. That's the tenth hit Bourne has had against R.A. Dickey. He's hit him well in his career. And he has hit the Blue Jays well in this ballpark. You mentioned it earlier. Right around 500 now in 10 games. The 
Michael Bourne at first, 42 steals a year ago. And Dickey is quick to check in on him. I think this is going to be interesting right here. Cleveland up by one run. Terry Francona's team's got a lot of speed in their lineup, and he says he's going to use it. Now the best way to defuse a running game as Brad Mills the third base coach is trying to find Fran Cohn in the dugout to get to sign from the manager. First strike one. You eliminate the number of pitches a runner can. Run on. Dickey is pretty good at neutralizing the running game. He's allowed just 20 stolen bases in his last 94 games. Just four all of last season. High fly ball to right. Bautista looking up at the wall. This ball is gone. Astrubal Cabrera, his first home run of the season, his second hit of his first hit of the night. And the Indians have extended their lead. It is now 4 1 Cleveland. You know, when you square up a knuckleball, Ball tends to go a long way. I don't think Estrubal Cabrera thought he got this one. He thought it might have been just a fly ball to right field. And you could see him throw the bat down and say something. And Dickey can't believe that that ball went out of the ballpark. It just kept climbing and kept going. Yeah, I think you're right. It looked like it hit off the end of the bat. I think both Cabrera and Dickey were both surprised that the ball went out of the yard. But it's a two run home run for Cabrera. As Trouble hit 16 a year ago for Cleveland. Strike three call. Jason Kipnis down on strikes. Dr. Hannibal Lecter is back in a new psychological thriller starting April 4th on City. Let the mind games begin. Five and up, four-one against R. A. Dickey. Astrubo Cabrera's two-run home run here in the top of the fifth extends their lead. Nick Swisher is grounded out twice. Fisher doesn't agree with Jeff Nelson, a home plate umpire. You know, that's one thing that gets overlooked, Pat. We know it's hard to hit, and we know it's very difficult to catch, but also it's tough on the umpires as well. You've got to really stay with it. And the ball's going to dance all over the place on you. you got to really lock in on that baseball. Looks like he threw him a fastball and crossed up Nick Swisher. Back to back strikeouts here in the fifth. Told you 94% of the time the lefties will try and put him away with a knuckleball, but you're right. That's a fastball. He turns it over, sinks it just a little bit, hit 83 miles an hour, but was in a good spot. Michael Brantley, one for two with a run scored. All right, Dickey has allowed just five hits. That's pretty good knuckleball right at the top of the zone. All the way back to the screen as that one got away from Dickey. Looked like he tried to do the same thing to Michael Brantley as he did to Nick Swisher, the previous batter, tried to surprise him with a fastball. That one off the, the glove of Aaron Sevia. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. 
Cleveland up 4 1, top of the fifth inning. R.A. Dickey in his first opening day start. Coming off a 20 and 6 Cy Young season with the New York Mets. Indians have done a good job of really waiting out Dickey and being very patient with him. We have run his pitch count up there 91 now here in the fifth inning. Dickey thought it was strike three. Took a step toward the Blue Jays dugout. That's four walks issued now by Dickey. Comes with two outs. Inside knuckle ball called low by home plate umpire Jeff Nelson, and that's going to bring Pete Walker out to give his starter. I think this is a good move right here. Dickey couldn't believe the Cabrera home run went out and then thought he had strike three. Yeah, just to help him regroup a little bit. It's a situation where Walker knows it's been a bit of a tough inning for him. Surprised by the home run and then thought he had thrown strike three to Brandley, so he gives him a little breather by going to the mound. Indians have left four on base so far. Santana goes after the first pitch. And got to show him flips to Dickey. Easy play on the grounder. As Drupal Cabrera hit a two run home run, Cleveland leads it four to one. Here at Rogers Center, Blue Jays are down by three. It'll be the top of the order. Jose Reyes, the shortstop, will lead things off. Reyes has gone 0 for 1 with a walk, goes after the first pitch, and it's at a mile high, shallow right field. Drew Stubbs calls off Jason Kipnis. The right fielder came over and took charge. One down. That's six straight retired by Masterson. Yeah, the double play by. Turned by the middle infield by Cabrera really got him off the hook. It really got him to the next level as a pitcher. Blue Jays had a single, an error, two walks. Adam Lynn hit a bullet right at Astrubal Cabrera. He turned it over for a double play, and he's been on cruise control ever since. Melky Cabrera scored on that double play ball. Blue question, Jays only run. The question is now, Buck, how much longer can he go? How long will Terry Francona stay with him? You mentioned the pitch count. Another pop up. This is going to help his pitch count. 
two outs on a couple of pop ups to right. Blue Jays Honda Super Camps are presented by Baseball Canada and Little League Canada. London, Ontario, April 19th, 20th, and 21st at Centerfield Sports with instructors Jesse Barfield, Sandy Alomar Sr., Devon White, Adam Stern, and Dwayne Ward. Visit the BlueJays.com slash Baseball Academy for more information. The Toronto Blue Jays are proud supporters of amateur baseball across Canada. Two quick outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Jose Bautista has been on board twice. Takes a first pitch breaking ball for a strength. Masterson a year ago went eight innings allowed the Blue Jays just two hits on 99 pitches. That was his opening day start last year. He left that ball game with a comfortable 4 1 lead. Same as tonight. 4 to 1. In that game, it took him 99 pitchers to throw those eight, eight innings. innings. He had one walk and struck out 10. And as we mentioned, Blue Jays mastered just two hits against Masterson. 3 1 to Bautista. On the corner. Another good pitch, and Bautista spoils it. Indians bullpen is quiet. Nobody is stirring down in that bullpen. Same for the Blue Jays. Strike three call Bautista call down on the breaking wall. So Masterson has back to back three up three down innings. We're headed to the sixth. Headed to the bottom of the fifth and here come the home hardware cleanup crew brought to you by Natra. Home hardware's exclusive line of safe environmental friendly cleaning products. For the Cleveland Indians wrap up their series on Wednesday and Thursday night. Boston will be in town. A three game set that starts on Friday night right here at Rogers Center. For tickets, call the Blue Jays at 416 341 1234. Log on to bluejays.com or stop by most Rogers plus locations and pick up your Blue Jay tickets. The first home stand of the season, Boston beat the Yankees 8 2 in their season opener Monday afternoon in New York. New York doesn't look real uh, strong right now, do they? They look like a the Blue Jays old team <laughs> from about five or six years ago. Vernon Wells was in left. Wow, Lower Bay is on that team. Ben Francisco was the DH. Another XJ who was here last year. Jason Nix played third base for the for the Yankees.
Buck Reynolds has walked in, grounded out. Dickey has thrown 96 pitches. 97 is popped in the air. In Carnacion in foul ground. One down. The 2013 Honda CRV and IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Donnie Chisinau had a single to left field last time up. It was interesting. Santana was at second base with two outs, and Chisinau lined at the left. But Brad Mills, the third base coach for Cleveland, stopped Santana at third. Milka Cabrera saved a run. That was the right decision, also. Got on to that one. Milky did very quickly, and he's got a great throwing arm. Aaron Loop. Starting to warm up now. What a great spring he had. John Gibbons anticipating getting down into this lineup. If Dickey loses some of them, maybe turn some of those switch hitters around. That's a good play by Dickey. Two quick outs here in the sixth. Fans are everywhere at Rogers Center inside the hotel out in center field. Hopeful of a Blue Jays comeback. 48,857 on hand. <laughs> Drew Stubbs. He's now six for 12 on opening day. Stubbs came from the Cincinnati Reds. Pops it up. Foul territory. Encarnacion gets there, and the inning is over. Quick inning for R.A. Dickey. Now he needs some runs from his offense. Looks like he has given him the attaboy for a good outing. As Pete Walker, the pitching coach, follows and congratulates Dickey for his first start of the season. Dickey goes six innings, five hits, four runs, three earned runs. And he threw a wild pitch. J.P. Aaron Seavey was charged with three pass balls over the course of those six innings. And if there's one pitch he probably wants to have back, it's the ball that was hit to right field. He just couldn't believe that that ball went out by a Struble Cabrera. Now the Blue Jay hitters have to get something going, but you know that Justin Masterson is close to the end 
of his night as Trubal Cabrera with his first home run, a two run shot to right. Yeah, he's, he's getting close. He's coming up on 100 pitches. You don't want to burn out your number one in the first game of the season by pushing him too far too fast. Benson, he threw 99 pitches in his first start of the year last season over the course of eight innings. But it was a much easier effort for Masterson as he walked one and struck out ten. He was in command. Quick at bats. A lot of fastballs early in the count. He was keeping it out of the middle of the plate. Ground ball right side. Kipping this dives. Popped to his feet. Just in time. And kind of shown made it close to first. Jason Kipnis dove, gloved it, and got to his feet quickly and went on to Swisher for the out. You know, we've showed you how they shift. Look at where Swisher is, how far he has to go to first base to get it. Right here, I thought Encarnacion had a shot because it looked like there was just a little bit of a problem getting the ball out of the glove. But Justin Masterson likes it. Kipnis with a nice play to lead off the sixth. Maybe the biggest at bat of the game. For Masterson came back in the third. Adam Lynn hit a hot shot one hopper with the bases loaded and they turned to double play. Yeah. Bases loaded, nobody out. And he hasn't given up a base runner yet. Good Since play then. by Swisher going to the backhand and shovels to Masterson. Lynn's retired. He's 0 for 3. That's the last time back in the third inning that the Blue Jays had a base runner. A walk to Encarnacion had him on the ropes, but he's found his way off. Good play by Swisher to backhand that ball on the line and then flip to a starter right there to record the out. Swisher was destined to be the right fielder for this ball club, and then Michael Bourne signed as a free agent late in the offseason, and Swisher was pushed to first base. He made 27 starts a year ago at first base for the Yankees. But he looks to be active and it's a good spot for him. And Sevia pulls it foul. The newest young Blue Jay fan is all decked out in a beautiful pink Blue Jays jersey. And she's having a good time. Breaking ball strike. It's one and two. They mentioned the crowd here at Rogers Center on Honda opening night, 48,857. And there they are. And Sevilla pops it in the center. 14 straight retired by Justin Masterson. He sets down the Blue Jays in order. Through six, Cleveland up, four to one. Aaron looped into the game.
Lots of excitement on opening night. A lot of fans on hand. Big crowd turned out here at Rogers Center. R.A. Dickey making his first opening day start. Goes six innings. Scatters five hits over those six innings. Four runs. Three earned runs. He walked four. Struck out four and threw one wild pitch. 104 pitches. And now Dickey is hopeful that the offense can bounce back. Get back in this ball game. He only trailed by three. So they will turn it over to the bullpen and the first guy this season out of the bullpen will be Aaron Luke 33 games last year. What a pleasant surprise he was. 0 and 2 record with a 264 earned run average. But he opened up the eyes because he threw strikes. Doesn't seem to get excited about anything. He can throw a breaking ball over at any time and account for a strike. Had a great spring. Made his major league debut against Cleveland last July. Worked two innings and set down six in a row. Yeah, he's not a left on left handed batter, one batter guy. He's a multiple inning guy. Throw strikes, you just carve up those corners with that fastball. Michael Bourne singled and scored ahead of the home run by Estrubo Cabrera. There's that wicked breaking ball from a tough angle. Well, you talk about a guy stepping across his body and firing tough pitches down and away. He is tough on lefties. And a crossfire. That shot right there will show you what Michael Bourne's looking at. That's the old emergency hack just to stay alive. That ball broke late, and he did a good job of spoiling it. A lot of times he will put breaking ball in the mind of a left hander, like you saw right there, Michael Bourne, and then cross him up and then throw a fastball. Gets a lot of fastball strikes. Bouncing ball past his doors in the left. Born a two hit game. Well, he indeed went to the fastball. His Doris is charged with an air on this ball. And that's a tough air. That ball had top spin and bounced right over his glove. So as Durris charged with the air, each team has committed an air tonight. As Drubal Cabrera will bat right-handed for the first time. First pitch strike. This is what I like about Luke. First batter reaches base, comes back, and pounds that zone with a strike. Nothing seems to affect him. He just goes out there and just does his thing. Just execute the next pitch. It's the only thing you have control over. Loop held lefties to a 207 average a year ago. Right handers hit 259. Born, of course, always a threat to run. One of the best base stealers in the game. 257 stolen bases over the course of the last four seasons. That's the most in the big leagues. Ground ball. Reyes quickly to Bonifacio, and they have no chance to double up Cabrera. One out. Big day tomorrow in the NHL, the Hockey Central trade deadline presented by Coors Light. Sportsnet will have full day coverage tomorrow, tracking every team on TV, radio, online, and mobile. Stay in the know on every trade, any way, anywhere, anytime, right here on Sportsnet. Jason Kipnis 0 for 3. There's a move to first base. Cabrera was off on first move and he is out at second. Good job by Luke. That's Rubel Cabrera. Just 9 for 12 in steals a year ago. Went on the first move of Aaron Luke and he is caught stealing. Trying to lull him to sleep. You see him just get off and he's going to go on first move. Luke picks up on that. And Encarnacion does a good job of 
clearing space to open up a lane to throw to Reyes to get the out at second base. Keep that speed off of the bases with the middle of the order coming up. Blue Jays cannot afford to give up any more runs. Just outside the line at third. Kipnis got jammed on an inside fastball and fought it off. Terry Francona's first game for the Cleveland Indians. John Gibbons, his first game back with the Blue Jays. Gibbons was rehired by Alex Anthopoulos in November of last year. He was let go by the Blue Jays in June of 2008. Bouncing ball off the dirt and kind of showing shovels to Luke. Another good inning for Aaron Luke. Blue Jays need some offense. Bottom third of the order. Colby Erasmus, the center fielder. Meiser Estoris, the third baseman. And the number nine hitter, Emilio Bonifacio, when we come back. On Sportsnet, brought to you by the 2013 Honda CRV and IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Lopez will finish this one off as Aaron Loop is into the game for the Blue Jays, and now Joe Smith, the right-hander, one of three very effective pitchers in the Indians bullpen a year ago. Smith. Last season, seven and four with a very good ERA at 296. Homer well, Erasmus trying to get aboard with the bunt. Bunts it foul. Not a bad idea. Yeah. The Blue Jays need some base runners. You got to get on any way you can. Smith is tough. He comes from underneath. Tough to get the ball in the air against them. You mentioned those 72 games last year that Joe Smith worked in that led the team. Led the Indians and and it's set up nicely. You mentioned the three relievers. Smith has been their seventh inning guy. Vinny Pistano, the eighth inning guy, and Chris Perez, their ninth inning. So the Blue Jays have to get something started. We mentioned overall the bullpen was 13th in ERA, but those three you mentioned, Pistano, Smith, and Perez, combined for a 113 WHIP and a 303 ERA. Back end of the bullpen is good. Asmus asked for time. Generally, when you see a side armor like Joe Smith, you think, okay, well, he's going to be tough on righties and not so tough on lefties. That's not the case at all. 
There's that breaking ball that he neutralizes left handers with. They hit just 218 against him last year. Right handers weren't much better, just 208 last year. When you see him come from down under, it's basically a sinker slider. That time he throws that slider that catches the outside corner for the strikeout. He can move that ball to the inside, to the outside. Sinks it to the left handers. Or catches that outside corner. Meister is Torres has had just one at bat against Smith. He's 0 for 1. Is Torres a switch hitter batting left for the first time tonight? Pops this one in the air. Michael Brantley, the left fielder, moves underneath it. Two quick outs for Smith here in the bottom of the seventh. Enthusiastic opening night crowd at Rogers Center. On the opening night, a crowd of 48,857 on hand. Remember last year opening day? Blue Jays trailed four to one going into the top of the ninth in Cleveland. Number nine hitter, Bonifacio. One hopper right to the second baseman, Joe Smith. Comes in and retires the Blue Jays in order on just eight pitches. We'll go to the eighth. Opening night, Cleveland leads it four to one. Right, fans at Rogers Center were given a chance to win a brand new 2013 Honda CRV. Danielle is the lucky winner. She comes away with a brand new car from Honda on Honda opening night. What a way to spend the night at the old ballpark and drive home in your brand new car. Congratulations, Danielle, and thank you, Honda. Aaron Loop in his second inning of relief. Nick Swisher 0 for 3 tonight against R.A. Dickey. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Way inside. Luke came in the ball game, started the seventh, and allowed Michael Bourne to reach on an air and caught Escubo Cabrera trying to steal. Had a one, two, three inning. Yeah, and only did it in 13 pitches, so he can go back out there. Swisher hits it on the ground right to the shortstop. What now? 
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Any accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Getting late for the Blue Jays. One out here in the top of the eighth. They trail by three. Just off the outside edge. Michael Brantley is the son of former Blue Jays coach Mickey Brantley. Mickey is in town. Watch his son play opening night. Indians are going to do something interesting when they open up their home portion of the schedule, their home opener. They're going to have the father and son combinations on their team throughout the first pitch. And there's a few of them on this team now. Terry Francona's father, Tito Francona, played a long time in the major leagues, 15 seasons, and played with the Indians. He's going to throw out the first pitch to Terry. And then Mickey Brantley will throw out the pitch to Michael Brantley. Steve McAllister will throw out the pitch to Zach McAllister. And Sandy Alomar Sr. will throw out the first pitch to Sandy Alomar Jr. That's a pretty nice touch. That's pretty cool. To have that many father-son combinations, first of all, on, on the team, and then to get them all involved on opening day. That'll be pretty neat to see. Grammar takes a walk. Second consecutive walk for Michael Brantley. And John Gibbons is making his way out of the Blue Jays dugout. He's made the signal to the bullpen. So the Blue Jay fans are going to get another look at a member of the Blue Jays pen. Aaron Loop comes in the ball game, works an inning and a third, and will leave here in the top of the eighth with one out. Sergio Santos into the ball game for the first time this year. Drive of the game brought to you by the 2013 Honda CRV and IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Fifth inning after a leadoff single as Trubal Cabrera hits a fly ball to right field that looks like a fly ball but keeps carrying. He hit 16 of them last year. This is his first one of 2013. Ari Dickey can't believe it as Cabrera rounds the bases with his first home run of the season. Sergio Santos, 2011 with the White Sox, 63 games last year. Of course, he started with the Blue Jays and had shoulder problems. Eventually, would undergo surgery, and he's making his way back. Coming off that surgery, he is in great shape. Boy, he worked yeah. hard in the offseason. He trimmed down and got his body in great shape. One out. Carlos Santana, the switch hitting catcher. 
Rips the first pitch down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Bautista will have to play it off the wall. Brantley is being stopped at third base as Bautista played it perfectly and gets it back into the infield. Santana not wasting any time jumping on the first offering from Sergio Santos. Yeah, you don't want to get yourself into a strikeout, two strike situation against Santos. He's got too many weapons to get you. First pitch up, and he rips it into the corner. Tough to stay up on top of that ball, but he does. Rips it into the corner. And now the infield has to come in with runners at second and third. Well, Santos is a strikeout pitcher, and here's where you need a strikeout, and you got the perfect batter at the plate in Mark Reynolds. Reynolds just 0 for 1 against Santos for his career. One out. There's a strike with the first pitch. You know what you want to do with Mark Reynolds is he'll chase that high fastball, that letter high fastball. If you can get him thinking about that, and then you do that, you can also brought, drop a breaking ball in there with two strikes out of the strike zone. There's a good slide a little bit up, but Reynolds fouled it back. Santos slider has been better the last couple of times out at spring training. Started and stopped this spring. It was thrown very hard and then a windy cold day in Clearwater. He threw an inning and felt a little soreness and had to back off just a little bit in spring training. Just now starting to get strong again. He's ahead 0 and 2. There's that strikeout, exactly what you need. Runner at third, less than two outs, and Santos delivers. That slider was pretty good. Told you it's been better the last week or so of spring training. Watch the depth and the movement on this one. Spins it, it looks like a strike. You start to swing, and look where it ends up. Just off the dirt. Pretty good pitch right there from Santos. Two big runs on base. Grantley at third. Santana at second. First pitch strike. 96. We've not seen that velocity out of Santos throughout spring training. Yeah, he was trying to generate that type of speed and that power. Opening night, you know you're fired up. Another good fastball, 95. Santos trying to keep it a three run deficit, and that's huge because in the bottom of the eighth, top of the order, Reyes, Cabrera, and Bautista. They can erase a three run deficit in a heartbeat. 0 oh, 2. Two outs. Santos gives up a double on his first pitch and comes back and strikes out two. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio.
opening night. Blue Jays got some work to do. They trail by three. New pitcher for Cleveland will be the right hander, Vinny Pestano. What a year for Pestano last season. You see, he got into 70 games, had a 3-3 three and three record with a very good 257 earn run average, but it's the holes pitching in front of Chris Perez. He had 36 holes last year, which was the second most in the American League. He does it with a good cutting fastball to register those nine strikeouts per nine innings. He can cut his fastball. He throws hard. He's got a nice slider that can finish off batters. He's a tough customer. Well, Blue Jays have the right guys up. It'll be Reyes, Delphi Cabrera, and Jose Bautista. Delphi Cabrera on deck is one for three, but he's hit the ball hard twice tonight. Bautista had a single in his first at bat. He's also walked and struck out. Blue Jays down by three. What's Reyes your, is 0 for 2. What you're looking for here is you're starting to face setup men and relievers. Just get the tying run to the plate. Give your team a chance. And you're right, you got the best two guys to lead off the eighth inning, and Reyes and Cabrera. Back to a breaking ball. 0 oh 2. Trying to hit that back door again, and Ray is talking to himself about staying back. Don't be jumpy. Two and two. Playing over in the National League, he hasn't seen too much of these Indian hitters, or excuse me, Indian pitchers. Reyes down the right side. Long run for Stubbs. He gets there and makes the grab. Got to show the umpire the ball. Kerwin Danley, first base umpire, holds up the right hand. We mentioned three center fielders in the outfield for Cleveland. That's a real defensive strength. And this is it right here. Stubbs is an excellent outfielder. Watch him check the wall real quick. Right before he goes into his dive, he checks one more time to see how close he is to that wall. And that is the best way to go ahead and catch that ball in the sliding motion where your legs take the brunt of that force against the wall. But Brantley and Bourne and Stubbs can go get it in the outfield. Each one of those outfielders started for their teams last year. There are 414 starts in center field in their outfield. Melky Cabrera. Cabrera lined into a double play in the first, singled and scored in the third, and popped up in the fifth. Ground ball. Swisher will go to the bat. Two quick outs. Prior to tonight's game, PlayStation provided us with a simulation of who they thought the Blue Jays player of the game would be. The video game version picked Jose Bautista to have a big game. Three for five with a homer. Tonight so far, Bautista's one for two, but he's got a chance to collect on that homer. Yeah, time to get it right here. Uh, single his first time up, walked, and then struck out on a 3 2 slider from Justin Masterson. He's had some good at bats tonight. Tough right handers. Masterson is tough on the righties. And Pistano, 168, the righties hit off of him. So he's tough too. Bautista's has only had one at bat against Pestano. He has a hit. Or a little bit of a late yeah. moving fastball down and away. It's a natural cutting action that he has on his pitches. 93 miles an hour. See the infield playing him to pull. So slider. Look how far Swisher is off the first base back. He got a long run. Made it look easy that time against Edwin Encarnacion. He'll play Encarnacion there also. Now takes a couple of steps to his left with two strikes on Jose.
I think Bautista recognizes this year he's got a lot of help in the lineup. He doesn't have to try to deliver that big hit all the time. He's always been patient at the plate, but now he knows he's got a lot of support. Checked his swing upstairs. Boy, that's the one that everybody's keeping their eye on with Bautista. Check that swing. Wrist. Yeah. That check swing that you always wonder is that wrist going to hold up? And he's had no indication of any concern whatsoever. Yep. Says he is totally fine. And you can see he holds up on that high fastball from Pistano. Full count, two outs. Because after that high fastball, Bautista strikes out for a second time tonight. The bullpen, six up, six down. Look, go to the ninth. Brett Cecil into the ball game. Blue Jays down by three. Part 3D in theaters Friday for a limited time only. Might be the play of the game right now if the score stays the same right here. Base is loaded, nobody out. Adam Lynn at the plate, and he smokes the ball to the right of Estrubal Cabrera. And how about that pretty play by the shortstop? Backhand stays right with a perfect feed for Gittness, and they turn over the double play. That helped Justin Masterson. That ball gets to the outfield. Blue Jays are going to be scoring a few more runs. That's the last time they had a base runner right there. That play really helped out Justin Masterson. As Trubo Cabrera back to back all star appearances at shortstop. It's the first Cleveland shortstop since Omar Vizquel made back to back all star appearances. Vizquel's last in 99. New pitcher for the Jays is the left hander Brent Cecil. It'll be 9 1 2 for Cleveland in the ninth. Drew Stubbs one for three. RBI single to left back in the second. He loses his bat. This one bounces off the padding and ends up in the camera bay. Second time we've seen a bat sail into the seats. The time it was slowed down. Watch this. See you. <laughs> he can't find it. But it hits that padding and really slowed it down. Drew Stubbs, we mentioned he came over to the Indians from Cincinnati. Three team trade involving Cleveland, Arizona, and the Reds. Shinsu Chu, the right fielder, ends up in Cincinnati. Cleveland gets Stubbs and Taylor Bauer, Brian Shaw from Arizona. Trevor Bauer did not make this team. He's down to AAA, but he's got a bright future and a very good arm. Drew Stubbs, a former first round pick of the Cincinnati Reds, 2006. A lot of power. The knock on Drew Stubbs was he struck out too much in Cincinnati. But he's got a lot of power.
Brett Cecil. Made the ball club out of spring training. Cecil and Jeremy Jeffers basically were in a dogfight for the final position in that bullpen. And Brett Laurie was placed on a disabled list. And both Jeffers and Cecil made the ball club. Blue Jays currently carrying eight relievers. Here's Jeremy Jeffers, his first year with the Blue Jays. Stubbs goes too far. There's the strikeout you were talking about. And get ready for the 2013 baseball season with MLB.tv. Watch every out of market regular season game live or on demand in HD quality. Watch up to four games at once with multi game viewing. Season subscriptions start at $109.99. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. Michael Warren bounces it to second. Easy play for Bonifacio. Two quick outs. I think everybody in this bullpen understands the situation when Brett Laurie gets healthy somebody's got to go. So yep. that's a healthy competition that's ongoing. Never know with baseball and it changes from day to day. Someone can get hurt and you can stick around but most teams will carry five starters and seven relievers. Blue Jays with the injury to to Brett Laurie it really opened up a spot there are the Eight relievers that they're going to carry, five righties and three lefties. Always pitching for a chance to stay in the big leagues. As Grugel Cabrera reached on a fielder's choice in the seventh, he homered against Sari Dickey in the fifth, a two run shot to right. Four one Cleveland. See, he's got a little more velocity on his fastball than we saw last year. And he worked at it. He went to the Steve Delabar school of <laughs> arm strength and built up his velocity a bit. It's a high fly ball to center. Rasmus drifting back in front of the warning track. Good inning for Brett Cecil. Now the Blue Jays will go to the bottom of the ninth. They trail Cleveland by three. Just three hits. Edwin Incarnacion will start it off, followed by Adam Lim, the DH, and J.P. Aaron Sevia. Time to get the bats going. Last chance for the Toronto Blue Jays as they trail Cleveland by 3 4 1. Bottom of the ninth inning. New pitcher for Cleveland is their closer, Chris Perez. 39 saves last year, 39 for 43. 0 and 4, though. One of those losses versus the Blue Jays. Fastball, sinker, good curveball. 
he will attack the strike zone. It comes right after it, unlike walking anybody. How about the baseball gods? It's the, exactly the same situation Perez entered the game last year. He was home, of course, but it was the ninth inning. The Blue Jays were down by three, four to one. They scored three to push it into extra innings, and Edwin Encarnacion got the game-tying two-run double. Right off the top of the wall. In left field, I thought he had a home run. That inning started with a single to a couple of singles and a sacrifice fly, a walk, and then that double. Right on the corner, it's a full count. Yunel Escobar started that inning with a single. Kelly Johnson in the single. Escobar went to third. Bautista hit a sack fly. Lind walked on a full count, and then Encarnacion tied it up. Goes after that fastball down and away and skies it to right. Stubbs is there. One down. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Connected. Here's Ken Reed and Ivanka Osmak. Rally caps are out at Rogers Center as they're trying to help the team get back into this ball game. Adam Lind is 0 for 3. Blue Jays have just three hits. Bautista singled in the first. Bonifacio doubled in the second. And Melky Cabrera let off the third. Blue Jays have been set down. 18 straight batters have been retired by Cleveland pitching. The last base runner to reach was Encarnacion back in the third. And that was that play of the game that we had that line drive double play that off the bat of Adam Lind. Slider off the plate inside. No appeal to the third base umpire. Chris Perez had 107 career saves, but he has 99 career saves with the Indians. Fourth most in the Indians' history. Jose Mesa, if you remember him, if you're a baseball guy, he is third with 104 saves. 39 of them last year for Chris Perez. Then fouls it back. Perez, a two time All Star. He came over to the Indians from St. Louis for current Blue Jay, Mark DeRosa. Full count, one out. Popped up. Shadow left field, Michael Brantley over near the line. Blue Jays are down to their final out. 19 straight Blue Jays have been retired by the Indians pitchers. Bullpen has been terrific. We mentioned the trio of Joe Smith, Vinny Pestano, and Chris Perez. Real strength of this Indians bullpen. You know, after that double play off the bat of Adam Lynn, it seemed to give Justin Masterson a second win. He came out, he struck out Aaron Sevier to finish the inning, and that started it, boy, for him. And the key, I think, for the Indians tonight was Masterson getting to six innings. It didn't look like he was going to be able to do that through three innings. He had thrown a ton of pitches, and he found it. Mowed him down, gave him six innings, and that let Terry Francona line up his bullpen for the last three innings. Yeah. 
Aaron Sebia drives it toward the gap. That's going to get down and go all the way to the ball. Aaron Sebia is headed for second, and he'll stop there with a stand-up double. JP is one for four. That's just the fourth Blue Jay hit of the night. Second extra base hit by the Blue Jays. Bonifacio had a double. This time, J.P. Arcega stays right on that ball and is able to drive it into the gap. Not a lot of extra movement in a swing right there. you got to stay on it. Kobe Rasmus takes one down the middle. Rasmus walked and he's also struck out twice. Trying to come inside, missed all the way across the plate, but caught the corner. Yeah, it still worked out for Chris Perez. They wanted that ball down and in. So far tonight, Blue Jays have had plenty of opportunities, but they are 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. As we mentioned, they haven't had a base runner until they're in CBS two out double, going all the way back to the third. That'll do it. Rasmus strikes out for a third time. That is the 100th career save as an Indian for Chris Perez. Big blow of the night was Astrubo Cabrera's two run a home run in the fifth. That gave the Indians a 4 1 lead, and that would do it. Yeah, it gave him some breathing room, and that makes a difference when those pitchers can get out there and mow you down like they did. So the Blue Jays lose the opener. We'll be back here tomorrow night as Brandon Moyle goes to the mound. Stay tuned for Connected or go over to one. You can check out the Giants and Dodgers. That's it from Rogers Center. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks for watching.